In this super short tutorial, I just wanna show you how you can generate this kind of test user data for signing up new users. Um, if you're like me, you have been in the habit of doing the proverbial kind of like stepping over the dirty laundry instead of picking it up, um, i.e. doing a really inefficient thing over and over and over again because you just build the habit of doing it. So I would go in, I'd add some, you know, test mail information, and then I'll go through and I'll add a test password, and then I'll hit continue, and then I'll add my details here, and I'll do that over and over and over again for every test user. Um, waste so much time. A way easier way to do this is, if I just refresh this page here, just, just have all of this like example test data generated for you. I can just go through this form super quick or I could even just have a button here that says sign up as a test user. So how do we actually set this up? We're actually using a service called randomuser.me and you don't actually have to set this up because the kind folks over at Coaching No Code Apps have this plugin, Random User Generator. Let me just check I'm on the latest version. Yes, I am. And so all I'm doing to use this action is I've actually got on my sign up page here. This is actually a page that um, that we're building in our in my bubble course, Think It, Build It. But this feels like a tip that I don't wanna hide inside of a course. It's just too valuable. Everybody should be doing it because um, the return on time investment is just too high. There is a variable that I'm storing inside of this hidden pop-up. This is a technique that Airdev have talked about that they use in their, in their apps that I've talked about before. Just have a place in your application to store groups that are just working as variables, just working as containers for data. So I've just got a group here, a variable, where the type of content is actually from this plugin, generate a, a user result. I'm actually not setting a default data source because I only want these fields to be filled out if I'm in the test version of my application. If I'm view viewing the live version, then I really do not want these fields to be visible, obviously, um, because it's the live application. So I've actually got a condition here, which is just saying, look, if we're on the test version, isn't live version is yes, that's how that works. Well, so what I've done to set this up, if I just add another um, condition here, just to show you what I've done to set this up is simply gone, get data from external API. The API provider is this random user generator, generator user, and then you can fill out certain parameters here. So what I've done is I've actually left the gender blank that's just gonna randomize the gender. And then I've just updated the nationalities here a little bit and you can look on the randomuser.me website to see what nationalities they accept. Doesn't really matter too much. So we're doing that and then we're storing this value, this user result inside of a variable. And then for all of the fields here on my page, I'm just setting the initial content to be one of the fields from that returned random user. So you can see here are all the fields that are returned. All right, so I'm doing that for each of my each of my fields here. And you could, of course, for these initial content, like I could pull in, if I go get data from external API, random user generator, right? I could fill this out here, but in this scenario, right? If I was gonna do this and then grab, it's gonna be the first item in this list of user results. I don't know why it's returned as a list when it's just, should be just one item, but there you go. So I could grab the first name that's fine, but then if I wanna use this condition again in uh, this, this data source rather, again in this guy over here, this last name field, well now I'm doing two API calls, I'm gonna get back two different users. I really just wanna do the API, API call once, store the result, and then pull out all the individual fields and use them in my page. So that's why we are doing that API call, or rather we're doing the plugin action within this variable here living inside of this hidden pop-up. And so that just lets me really quickly skim through this form. But if you wanted to take this one step further, you could even just have, if I had to go and duplicate this button, I could even have, let me just check that I'm on the new button here, cool. So I could have like sign up as test user. And this action could simply go down from account and you could go create an account for somebody else. And here in this variable, you would go variable random users um, 
email and then you just add all of their fields here individually right you'd point the first name to that random users um, name first and etc 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 all the way down and just create a test user that way and then on that button you'd probably want to have a condition also that says that hey this button here actually let's not show this unless we're in the development version again we don't want to expose in this kind of stuff that's really just there to help us test and do reviews quality reviews of our application we do not want to expose this to our real users so I probably just have an event on this button which just says that again if we're not the live version then sure go ahead and show me so right here right I could just go sign up as a test user Brill I'm signed up I don't have an action after here to kind of navigate me to a different part of the application but of course that's probably what you'd want to do and there we go there is that test user okay so that is how to generate random users in your application for testing purposes